go. Good morning, I'm Janine. And I'm Chris. And welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. Yeah. Oh my, can you believe it? April's almost over. It's almost draft day. It's almost <laughs> draft day. Football is, I, I can get out of my football depression because I'm getting ready to see all the new people yes. that everybody's going to take for their teams and hopefully the Browns do something. Yeah, so I get to listen to all the sports people talking and her going, what are you doing that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I love my football. She does. She does. All right. Well, we have Ugh. a long calendar list because <laughs> the next release, the first release in May is actually Mother's Day. Oh, so we wow. have like three weeks of workshops before we get to the next video release. That's a lot, guys. It is a lot. We just put too much stuff on the calendar. No, we didn't. We did not. Okay. So she said. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I complain about in the store. We did that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Right. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Okay. All right. So, the 26th. Yeah. An advanced spinning technique, spinning coils from five to eight. Okay. What you got to show us? So, I know we have a few different spinning techniques coming up. Mm -hmm. And I brought one specific yarn over because this actually has a lot of techniques. Well, it does. There are, there are a lot of techniques in here. I I have coils in here which because it was done with thicker yarns, you can't see so well, but there are coils in here as well as I think we have we have beehives and beehives cocoons. and cocoons. Well, that's so, actually after the 14th, but it is coming up okay. in May. And and they're in here as well. So this has a lot, see, when you start learning all those techniques, you can make the fun, fluffy, crazy stuff. But yes, this has some super coils, some regular mm -hmm. coils, some beehives and cocoons. So was this also a core spinning technique? Yeah. Because we have that coming up too. Oh. In May. We have a lot of advanced spinning yes. techniques coming up. Yes. All right. So, so what's after coils first? Yep. On the what's after the coils? Um, no school, no skill tapestry. This is a new one. So Chris got, she saw this thing somewhere, and she went, "Oh, I can do this. This would be cool. A great just, in a way to introduce people to tapestry." So yeah, a lot of people get like overwhelmed. They mm -hmm. look at tapestry and they're like, "I just think that's too much for me." Mm-hmm. I saw this video, and I can't even remember who it was from, but I saw this video. I, I'm constantly watching, trying to learn new things. Because right. if I'm not learning, how am I supposed to keep teaching? Correct. So I'm out there, and I this is what I do at 10 o'clock at night when my husband's snoring in bed next to me. <laughs> I watch videos. And I'm this lady comes up, and I went, oh my God, that's so easy. We can do a no skill tapestry. And so then I start texting her. So what do you think of this? I send her the link to the video. Do you think we could do this for a no skill? And I love it. And, it, and it's so easy. I'm gonna grab it. Oh, please. There you go. It's and I'm trying so to remember neat. the name of the technique. I think, I think they call this quilting. And, and I'm gonna have to double check that and I'll let you guys know, but it's, easy <coughs> it's calm it doesn't require you to bring 10 million bits and bobbles of your scrap yarn with you you actually need to bring <coughs> nothing with you everything you need for the day of the class is provided in the kit and there'll be a few different colorways <coughs> do not die on me today <laughs> it's fiber <coughs> she's inhaling all my fiber that's around us okay i got it i'm good Go You're good? I'm good. Okay, don't die. Um, but um, So we'll provide everything you need. There'll be a few different color combinations. You'll have everything you need to do everything that's in this. Everything that's in this. And um, it's, it's truly a piece you're going to finish in the three hours that you're here. Um, and while this has a lot of straight shapes, in the class I'll be showing you how you can create some... Yeah. some flow in the piece. I was just trying to knock something out really fast that so we'd have a sample. 
for, it is so cool. This was yeah. so much fun sitting here watching her do this. I mean, it just came together just like that. Yeah. It was fun. It, like hour and a half, <clears throat> two hours, I think is what it took me. And that's with me talking. And yeah, because you were still trying to figure it out, your colors and yeah. things like that. So it was really easy. The, the thing that I like the most about this is one of the things when I am doing tapestry that drives me crazy is I hate weaving in ends. Same with knitting. I hate weaving in ends more than anything in the star world. And this was so simple. Yeah. It just made my life easier. <clears throat> so, yeah. Really nice, fun class. Great way to introduce yourself to tapestry without having to commit because you don't have to buy a loom. Um, but it lets you know if you want to go further into tapestry. You know? Why not? There's really... Mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of things, there's two tapestry stitches you learn. Yep. In this, everything <clears throat> else is just basic weaving. Mm -hmm. So, it's an easy in and out weave. It is. It is. It's just your basic tapestry. <coughs> so, but it's super easy. Yeah. All right. And then, oh boy. No, no. I hate when she says, oh boy. Well, this is the day, the 29th. There's a lot of stuff going on because uh -huh. it's also local yarn shop day. Oh. So we have your beginners, your no skill tapestry. Local yarn shop day is all day, 10 to 4. And oh. We will be offering 15% off products in the store like we typically do for any special events. Okay. Excludes the charity, the discontinued, and all Ashford products. Um, and who knows what else we're going to do that day. I haven't really thought about it yet. And I haven't talked to her about it yet either. So no, we'll figure it out. She hasn't. See this confused look on my face? Well, but it's it's... I think it's it's worldwide local yarn shop day, so it supports all those local what yarn shops. What day of the week is the 29th? It's a Saturday. Okay. We're good. Yeah, it's a Saturday. We're good. It's the last Saturday of April. And it is the same day that there are these two ladies who do these mystery knit-alongs, and they pick a state or region of the United States. Last year, it was the Florida road trip. This year, it's the Great Lakes road trip. That's so awesome. The states all around the Great Lakes. I think that's awesome. And so they have, um, they're going to be putting together, um, Valerie and Cynthia, they actually <laughs> come up with these patterns and you will have a Valerie pattern and you'll have a Cynthia pattern and you get to choose which one you want to do in your project. So they're all going to be unique. Is unique this the one colors? I'm dying yarns for you for? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so if anybody's participating in this mystery knit along <laughs> and you're local and you're like, so this is the one thing, but I need colors to go with it. Yeah. Come see me <clears throat> because I'm so okay with dying yarns for people specifically for these right. projects. So we do know that it's a shawl. And it's going to be um, a half circle crescent shape type shawl. It requires fingering weight yarn, and you're going to need three different colors. I have a lot of fingering weight yarn that's really fun. Yeah. So I had some leftover fingering weight yarn that was hers that I used for my sweater that I knit, the Galena. And I'm like, okay, I have my variegated. I need two more tonals or solids to go with this. Mm -hmm. I go, I want chestnut. I love chestnut. And I'm like, okay, so what other can go with this? And we picked um, a yellow. Did golden yellow. Golden yellow. Like a golden yellow color. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how that mm -hmm. comes out. But they kick that off on April 29th, which is local yarn shop day. They do that on purpose. They want you to participate. They would love for you to get your yarns from a local yarn shop in your area. Um, and right now, until then... In order to participate, your cost is $4.98. That's not bad. Every time you wait, once a clue is released, and I think there's nine different clues on this one, every time a clue is released, that cost goes up. Oh, how sneaky. So you can jump in anytime you want, and they it will send you... It just costs you more money to right, get the patterns? It's like a dollar or two. It goes up every time. Oh, that's funny. And then that way Smart. you... Smart. And you'll get everything up to that point. Which are your directions. So is that how this... So I've never done one of these. Right. So, so how does it work when somebody is doing a mystery knit along like this? So the first thing they do is they send you this informational page that says this is the materials that you're going to need. Okay. This is what your gauge is going to be. Please do your gauge swatch 
before we get started to make sure that you're using the right knife. Now, typically, now she went like this. Typically, with a flat piece, we don't care too much about gauge. I'm not putting it on my body. It's a shawl. It's a shawl, but they do say that if you are doing the larger sizes, yeah, um, it's a great way to make sure you have enough yarn. I'll well, just get more yarn. Right. So I'm I'm getting I'm going to have <laughs> more than enough yarn talking. for mine. Right. But I they mean, have... you've got between all four skeins. I mean, you've got what twelve hundred? Oh, no. no, because you need each skein has to be about four hundred and forty-five yeah. yards. Your skeins are not four hundred and forty-five yards. Are they? They're less. Oh, you got that. You I you're got doing the, three, the acid. I got the three ninety-three. Yeah. So I need yeah. extra skeins for mine just to get to the yardage. That, so I have extra. Okay. And they have two sizes. They have this smaller misses size, and then they have the larger plus size. So, okay. and if you're doing the larger size, you need one extra skein of the main color. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. Beads, if you want. If you don't want, don't do them. Totally up to you. Um, but we won't know how any of these colors play out until we actually start getting the releases of the cast on do this. Maybe I'll get... Maybe I'll join in. Okay. And I will use the 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 color, the two, at least one of the skeins that I just got mm -hmm. from Laura from Laughing Cat Fibers. That's a perfect way for me to put her yarns and my yarns together in a project yep. and go, look how we complement each other, Laura. So some of the ladies who are I thinking about stuff. doing this, see this year I'm in on the beginning of it. So okay. I jumped in right at the very beginning. So I've been advertising, uh, making sure people know these are the 10 color choices that, you know, are just samples yeah. of what you could do. I'm like, go dive into your stash. See what you have. Find that variegated or that solid that you want to use and then come in here and, and match, match it up. something else with it. That's perfect. Yeah, so use some of that stuff you've got in your stash and then come in here and finish getting the rest of it. You know? And That's keep the cost idea. down. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it uses a or size. Or not, and you can get all your yarn from me. I mean, I'm okay with that, too. It uses a U.S. size 5 knitting needle. So, yes. You can I'm okay that. with that. Yeah. It's a 5. It's a 5. It's a 5. The right. socks are going to kill me. So the end of April, yeah. So that's a lot going on a on one day, but it's a lot of fun happening. I'm trying to think. I'm going to have to think because it being a Saturday, like I'm a lot more flexible mm -hmm. time-wise on a Saturday. We might have to come up with some fun well, stuff. Well, you're going to be here. In, yeah. So but we'll, I mean, I'm just like. Yeah, some other things might, that we can do. I might have to do some little draw, like every couple of hour drawings. There you go. For people that are in the shop, shopping that day to participate yep. in that. Maybe we'll be giving away a skein of yarn every couple That'll hours. That'll be fun. That'll be yeah. fun. I could do a free workshop. Just saying. Mm. We're, we're going to plan some we stuff. We got some You stuff. just wait. All right. Oh, wow. We still have a lot of stuff. Okay. May. On the third, yeah. ply spinning from five to eight. Okay. So, plying, mm -hmm. we cover pretty much, I'm not going to say all, we cover another three or four different ways to ply your yarns beyond your basic traditional two ply. Mm -hmm. Okay. We cover three ply. We cover the Hauser method. We cover spiral plying, which is what these lovely things are done in. Um... I feel like there's something else and I can't remember what it is. Uh, chain plying. There we go. Navajo chain plying. We do that as well. So it's a fun class. Mm -hmm. um, the last time I taught it, the couple of people that were in the class, they're like, I learned so much today. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You just have to have a lot of prep ahead of time. Make yeah. sure you have enough singles Please to do it. Please look at that Longtail Knits page and see the amount of singles yeah. you need. Because it is a lot of homework yep. to come take this class. Yep, yep. So you're going to need that. You don't have time to spin all the singles. No, but if you have a lot of singles already sitting there that you haven't Just bring, applied, them. bring those. Um, on the fourth, intro to macro weave from 11 to 4. All right. So we talked last week or last two weeks ago about all things macrame. Mm -hmm. Well, about macrame in general. Macro weaving is a place you go after you really get doing macrame. Mm-hmm. And macro weaving, it's just a combination of your macrame 
and your skills you've learned in weaving. Yeah. This is not a finished project by any means. Mm -mm. This is just a sample to show techniques. Right. Um, and in the Mecca Weave class, the main thing that we show you, well, I show you, is how to get, how to, learning how to get your framework in. Because if you right. don't get your framework, you can't build a finished piece on that. Yeah. And it took you guys the entire five takes, hours to set that frame up. It does. You don't even start weaving until the four hour mark. Right. Like it, it's a lot. And it was a small piece. It was. It's the size, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's yeah. the size. So when we're done going through, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the macro weaving. Yeah. And stuff like that in the macrame. And just so you so. know, you do have to have a couple prerequisite workshops yes. under your belt. You have to have either basic knots or beginner's macrame. Yep. And you need to have a weaving technique, either rigid huddle or tapestry weaving in order to do that project. So make sure that you get in on the ground floor of all those basics. For sure. And if you missed one, just let us know. We'll throw it in somewhere. Yeah. I throw basic knots class in randomly for yeah. people when they're like, they're like, well, I can't do a Thursday at one. All right. So what day what are you off? Do? And I can do rigid huddle weaving whenever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yep. Um, skill building for spinners is basically that you come and Chris will be here for four hours. Yep. And actually it's three hours. It's five to eight that day. And she will help you work through any of the techniques you're struggling with. Yep. And that's basically it. Uh, it's, yep. Laura was at the last one and Laura, um, we, we worked on Laura's, um, plying. But also, she was still spinning her singles though too, wasn't she? No, it was plying. Like, like, no, she, she was still spinning. She, have... she had that blue braid. She had to finish. Spinning. Oh, I forgot about the blue braid. Yeah, you know, the blue braid that bled all over her fingers. That was fun. <laughs> she was purple her fault, she... <laughs> not mine. She dyed it. I did not. This did not. Mm -mm. And somebody else rinsed it. So I touched it. Not. It was not my fault. Her it hands were blue. It was so funny. She was. She just looked like, like she ah. dipped her hands in ink. But so. So Laura really just wanted to get through her braids, right? But um, she doesn't really like spinning. But she, she did a really good she, job. It, I was, she's cracking me up. She she kept going. I'm never doing this again. And I'm like, that's okay. She goes, but I have to do this because I paid you to dye the fiber, <coughs> and I need to learn to do something with it. And she did take <coughs> beginner spin, but has no desire to go beyond beginner spin. So she took the skill builders class. Yeah. Just to like get that refresher. It's a little rough for her because she is allergic to wool, so she can only she's use very one of the limited. fibers I have. Yeah, she's limited in what she can spin. But she was funny that day. It was it was oh, a fun day. It was. On the sixth, we have core spinning from one to four. You're busy that week. Every single day you have something. Core spinning. Yep, we talked about it. We did. Um, on the tenth, we have a spinning with intention tapestry workshop, but she's still working on that. I'm still working on it, so I don't have a sample. Sorry, yeah. guys. We'll get it to you later. Uh, beginners macrame on the eleventh from eleven to three. The difference between beginners macrame and basic knots is you actually will have a project when you're done with the beginners macrame. Yeah, basic knots. You just get to play with knots. Yep. You'll know so them. There you go. But and you'll have a way to go home and practice them. Like yes. you need to practice those knots. If you're taking basic knots so that you can take macro weave, you better practice. You don't practice those knots, we are gonna have words. Because you gotta know them, or we're gonna sit there and we won't even get through the framework. If right. you don't practice your knots beforehand, like, like you, you may as well just skip that macro weave and take the next one and keep practicing your knots. You need to know two things. We're yeah. knots and double half hitches. Just Work them all if the time. If you know those, you'll get through anything. Yeah, so, you know, and then just pick up stuff. Get some cords. Cords are cheap here. They have their practice cords that they get. They do, but if you want to just practice a thing and then have it done and keep yeah. it, use a smaller cording. That's yeah. true. Something like that. All right. And then on the 13th, must be a Saturday from 10 to 3, we have Rigid Huddle Basics. You get to take the Ashford sample at Loom, which is 10 oh, inches. Oh, yes. And I will teach you from beginning to end how to create a very basic scarf. And you will have a finished item when you are done. Um, in lieu Yay. of football, these are the Browns colors. So there you go. I, um, I should just buy this and be done with it. You should. 
It's my colors. Um, the thing is with the uh, with the rigid heddle, you are gonna go from beginning to end. You're gonna do it. I will show you. I'll take it apart. You get to do it. The only way you're gonna learn how to do something is to do it yourself. Firm, true believer in that, and it's true. And it's from beginning to end. Five hours, you're done with your scarf. And then if you truly, absolutely love it, we'll talk about what's that biggest thing you want to make and we'll get you into the size loom that works for you. I stock the 10, 16, 20, 24, and 28 inch widths of the Ashford looms here in the store. Yep. And why not? If you want the 32 and the 48, those are the two that I don't stock. They're the other two sizes that they have. We will special order those for you uh, because they're really big. And I think I've sold <laughs> one of each, maybe two 32s in the entire time that I've been an right. extra dealer. Well, so just one's, they're really big. It's big. You don't think it is, <clears throat> but I'm telling you what, I have a 28 inch knitter's loom and it's big. Like, and I, 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 I I'm extreme. So I went mm -hmm. from the 10 inch samlet, samplet to the 28. Yeah. I didn't even stop anywhere in between. And now I wish that I had done a smaller knitter's loom. So I may still get a smaller, the smaller, the 20, the 20 yeah. just so, because it would be easier for me to carry that. Cause a lot of the projects right. that I do here are They're smaller. smaller. So hindsight, she has a 10 inch here in the store that we use uh, just for the classes. Here. She just leaves it here. Um, I just like the bag. Yeah. I just want the bag. They changed and, the color of the bags. See the, the new bag color up there. Oh, is that the color for the looms too now? Everything is now the gray, the gray and black as opposed to that oh. tan. Yeah, they changed the colors. They I thought that was color. just for the spinning bags. It's the um, knitter's looms too. Nice. Now I have to have one. Now you have to have one for a different color. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. So yes, yeah, so that's it for the, for the calendar. I am going to remind you because of the day i mean this is releasing on i believe it's the 24th sure 23rd somewhere in there somewhere it's the 23rd <laughs> we need to have calendars today is the 23rd we pre-tape but at the end of may oh. mark your calendars if Please. you have not already marked them for the great lakes fiber show in worcester yes. at the wayne county fairgrounds our next video that's what we'll be talking we'll be talking about, about that all the vendors and everything. um because the store will be closed the 26th through the 29th. The 26th is Friday. So that's the setup day that worked really well last year with me going out and doing so nice. it too. And then Saturday and Sunday, the 27th and 28th is the show. Yep. And then the 29th is Memorial Day and the store is closed. Because we got to come put everything we back. We got to put everything back together. <laughs> it would be closed anyway because of the holiday. Right. But that's the day we spend we putting everything back off. together. No, we don't. We got to come back and work and yeah. put everything back together for you um, guys. But mark it. Mark your calendar Please. because it's, it'll be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. And we want to sure. start reminding you. So that's the calendar through the 23rd. Well, the 13th of th May. The 13th of May. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Um, so last video. Yes. We talked about macrame. Mm -hmm. um, and you just saw the piece for the intro to <clears throat> macro weave. Um, I know you saw like the project bag and the moon and the plant hanger, and those are some very, those are basic macrame techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, in the moon, there is a little design pattern that you make from simple square knots and double half hitches. Mm -hmm. Um, the video that I'm going to show that we're going to go into, I'm going to go over a few basic techniques and I'm going to show you that design pattern. So it's really very cool. But one of the things I wanted to show you is if you're going from macrame into that macro weave world, I brought over one of my one of my macro weave pieces that everybody laughed as I was making it, <clears throat> but I'm gonna have to stand. I'm not sure how much of this you can see, but so this guy, my owl, this is a macroweave piece. Like if you were gonna do a full and complete macroweave piece, this has weaving techniques, 
mixed with macrame knots to create an image or a landscape or a freeform design. That's what macro weave is intended to do. Right, and you used cording, you used fabric in this, you used roving and locks. Yep. You can use yep. anything you want Fiber. to in these projects. There's a felted piece that Janine helps I me with because I was losing my mind trying to felt. But it has a little bit of everything in it. And when you're, like the sky's the limit. Once you get into macrame and the macro weave world, you create whatever you see. Because the, like I said, the very first thing we have to do is we have to create the framework. Well, the framework is created from macrame. And then the rest is woven in between. And you can see there's different sections of macrame through the whole thing. So up here around his eyes, there's beads. Like we talked about, you can use beads in your macrame. Um, so yeah, that's just one thing you can make. But I just wanted to show a sample so you guys had an idea. But we will be back, or I will be back. Janine's going to film for me. Mm -hmm. Um, in just a couple of minutes, we will show you, again, some basic macrame techniques and then also one design technique. All right? Yeah, so that's going to be fun. So you guys stay tuned. enjoy. Stay tuned for the video, and we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, guys. Chris here again with the Blue Fiber Tree. Um, as previously mentioned, today I am going to run you through a few basic macrame techniques and then I'm going to actually show you how to take two of those techniques and make this great little design that's right here at the bottom of the moon. Okay, so we're going to start with just, I'm going to talk, but we're going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Um, you can see that I already have attached some of my cording to my dowel rod. Um, I'm going to just add the last three larks heads that I need and I do I go by taking my cording which I'm using a four millimeter single strand I'm going over my dowel rod opening that loop and I'm dropping these two into that loop and then I just snug it up tight and then I space these however close or far apart I need them for whatever technique or pattern that I'm doing okay so the lark set again Fold your cord in half, go over your dowel rod, open up the loop you created by folding it in half, pull your cords through, and then snug tight. Okay, I'm gonna add one more strand, and then we're gonna move on to another stitch. Over the dowel rod, open the loop, and drop your two cords through. That is a lark's head, okay? it is. The most common way to attach your cords to a dowel rod. So now once you have your lark's heads in, that's a hard thing to say, you can, what I like to do is I like to do, um, let's just say we're going to do a double half hitch. I'm going to take my outer strand and I'm going to do just a horizontal double half hitch, which comes straight across your work and snugs right up to your lark's heads. Take your outside cord and you can go from left to right or right to left. I just like working left to right because that's how I read and it just works better for me. So you take your next cord after the cord you're using. This is called your filler cord and this is your working cord. And we go over that filler cord and we come behind the top of the cord as it comes out of our lark said. So we're coming behind that and you are using your thumb to gently push up on your filler cord and you are lightly pulling down on your working cord. If you pull it like this and you bring both strands horizontal, it will look like you tied a shoe and you won't have this up and down bump that you create with pulling down. The second stitch goes over your filler cord and in between this loop that you create and I'm pushing up with my thumb 
lightly pulling down. And when you're done, a full double half hitch will have two bumps and then your working cord will come down. After you've done those two bumps, you pick up the next cord and you repeat this process all the way across your work. <clears throat> when would you use this in your pieces? Um, I use this, I tend to use this atop the, atop the craw, atop, on the top, I can't say that word, but on the top of all of my pieces under my lark set, if I'm doing like a full macro weave piece, I tend to put a row of this in there. I use this when I'm macro weaving to separate segments. Um, and as soon as I do this one, we'll come back and we'll do a diagonal just so they can see what that diagonal looks like. Mm hmm um, I use it to create, this stitch is what's used right here to create the shapes that you make within macrame projects. Um, and a lot of people, if they don't like how loose that filler cord is going across the top, you can use a rubber band to hold it in place. You can wrap it around and just kind of pull so that stays a little more taut. You can use that clip with the magnet that I was talking about in the last video to hold that off to the side, either or. So it's a great way to <clears throat> make designs yep. and then fill in with some other things later. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the main part of macro weave. It's the main part of your framework. Like you can't do macro weave without knowing the stitch. Okay. This knot. And the biggest part, the hardest part that I find people have trouble with, with the double half hitch, is that they want to pull like this. So their knots, instead of being vertical when they're done, their knots are at a diagonal. Or you can't see the knot because it does look like you've tied a shoe. And I, that's, I, when I teach it, I'm constantly going, not like a shoelace. Right. So, <clears throat> but. So the importance of the tension on that yeah. uh, passive piece that you're using. The attention on. Yeah. The on that cord. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the looser that cord gets, the more your horizontal line is going to accidentally drag and drop. Um, without that tension, I can't keep my row even. Right. So, so I keep reaching over and, and tugging, but really your right hand is the one that's kind of keeping that in check when you pull that through. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. I, that's what that thumb is doing. That thumb is holding up that filler cord to keep it up. Even if it's loosened here, as long as I'm pushing up with my thumb, I'm able to keep things where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Now, should those... And this is me asking this question. Yeah. So you're when fine. you're done with that two-step process of doing the double half hitch, yep. those two cores that you're using from your Lark's head, they yeah. should be about the same width as the Lark's head when you're done? They're going to be a little bit wider. Okay. It's going to be a tiny bit wider because you're literally taking something that was two strands. And you're making four. And you're making four. So it's going to push... You're gonna, you can see right here, it's gonna push out a little. And if I had left myself enough room here, it might've pushed back a little, there you go. So you'll see it comes out a little and out a little on the sides. And then when you're done, you take your working cord, your filler cord, sorry, and you drop it because he now becomes somehow a part of your piece. Mm -hmm. um, some people will take that piece and weave it into the back later and not use it, but then you lose your count of your cords. So I personally don't like doing that. Sorry, I had to grab my, I needed my little clip. All right, so when I'm coming back and I wanna do a dia, I can come back and do another horizontal clove hitch directly underneath that 
or I can do a diagonal. When you're working a diagonal, you have to remember to keep these bumps vertical. You don't want these guys to tilt. You want them to remain up and down unless you're creating a piece like this and then you're literally trying to follow a curve, okay? But to do the diagonal, I form my line and because I'm working right to left, instead of coming up over my filler cord and back down to the left, I'm gonna come up over my filler cord and back down to the right. And again, I want the end of my working cord to come behind itself up top. You see how that comes down over? And we want that guy to line up right underneath the last bump that we did in the row. Now that can be difficult depending on the cord that you're using. So oh, for sure. Yeah, I struggle with the first couple when I'm changing directions. Most people do. And a lot of people, the other part that people have trouble with is maintaining straight cords in the background. Mm -hmm. Like these tend to go like this a little. Mm -hmm. And that's just time, practice, patience. You know, and even the one, even when I'm doing this, as much as I've done macrame, my cording will still snug to the, it'll mm -hmm. swing a little bit of a direction. It's almost impossible. I'm, I've seen people who do it perfectly straight and I'm like, God bless you. If you could teach me how you keep those cords in the background perfectly up and down, go ahead. But usually I'm in too much of a hurry to take the time to make them completely straight. Yeah, it adds character to the piece, too. Sure. That's what we're going with. But yeah, you can see as I continue, I'm just, again, with my left, I'm holding that filler cord where I want. And with my right, I'm bringing my cords over. The biggest part of learning how to do the double half hitch is managing your cords. If you manage the tension on your cords, and you really pay attention to that, you will have probably mastered a lot and saved yourself a lot of trouble. A lot of things, people just kind of haphazardly, like I've watched people like pick up right here and pull the cording over and try to create that and then pull the whole cord through. Well, that's a lot of work instead of just picking up my end and doing with my end what I need. I go to the end of my cord, I pull it over, I'm guiding my cords where I want them, and then I'm following through. And you can see, I'm doing the best I can at keeping them vertical, but there's still a tilt. It's just how it's gonna be. No, oh, it's just when it, the knot also will yep. do that. <clears throat> All right, so that is very simply a diagonal half hitch or excuse me, a diagonal double, <sighs> double half hitch, double half hitch. My brain stopped. There you go. Real simple. Okay. And then I'm not going to take anything apart, but we're just going to do a quick refresher on a square knot. And I'm going to do a right handed square knot. So you pick up your right cord, make a backwards four, lay your left cord over the bar that you created. Take it up behind the two center cords and up through. And we pull. There we go. We want it flat. Now, to finish that, I make a four, drop my right cord over, take it behind the two filler cords in the center, up through the four. And there's a very simple square knot. If you manage a lark set, your double half hitches, and you could master a square knot, you can create almost anything. This piece is mostly the only thing that's on here that's not in here 
are figure eight knots and this twist. A twist is very simply coming in and we're gonna do that first half of the square knot. And instead of coming back with the other four, we're just gonna keep repeating the exact same stitch over and over and over. The thing with doing this is as you're working, your piece is twisting. So you kinda gotta pay attention. You can see that twist that I'm already getting. I'm always only picking up my right hand side. Now granted, as I turn, this now feels like my right hand side, but it's not because we've twisted. I'm gonna still pick up this cord because it came from my right and I'm gonna to continue to make that twist. The biggest part of doing the right-handed twist is that you are fully pulling tight when you make that, because if you're doing these half knots loose, these right-handed half square knots loose, you're not gonna twist. You're just gonna hang out and, and it's gonna look funny. So I'm gonna do that backwards probably going to be wrong, but I think I'm seeing it correctly. We'll find out. Yes, there we go. I always have to do that one backwards and then I come back and I can pick it back up like I did. But see, as I keep going, I'm just making the same half of a square knot and it could be a right or a left. It doesn't matter as long as whichever one you do, you do through the whole entire piece. And you will just continue to do that until that little twist is as long as you would like it to be. Um, to create this, it looks way harder than it is. And it's really simple. We start in our center. You can see right here, we're starting in our center. I am literally picking up the strand that's next to my center. So I take the right one in the center, left one in the center, comes underneath it and I am gonna do a double half hitch right here. And I'm pushing it right up underneath the Lark's Knot instead of keeping it vertical. That center cord that I wrap around, that's becoming my filler cord that I'm gonna be wrapping all of those knots around. And I'm gonna continue moving to the left of my piece doing a full double half hitch. And you can see the angle that was created there, right? And you can see right here you have pieces that are dropping, okay? I'm gonna move this guy up out of the way. There we go. We use six Lark's heads are here and there's still one strand hanging on each side when we're done, okay? Because this is made at the center of the moon piece. This can be done with less cords. It can be done with more. You'll just have to do different types of knots in the center to fill in your center, or it's gonna look funny, just so you know. But I'm just following a diagonal right now, that's it. I'm just creating a diagonal, just like this. And I'm gonna come to this side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. My center one becomes my filler cord. And I'm pushing him up there. Oh my goodness, I momentarily forgot how to do a knot. That was bad. There we go. Finding the end of my cord. shoestring. Let's not do that. Find the end of my cord. I'm always trying to come back to the end of my cord because when I pull from the center to go up and around, I end up doing bad things and my knots don't look pretty. Remember that last cord on the very end of both sides we're not doing anything with. He's just hanging out looking cute. So I'm coming here. All right, 
So now that you've made those knots, now you're going to come in and find your four center cords and you're going to do a square knot. Again, I don't care if it's right or it's left, as long as all four knots that we create in this piece <clears throat> look alike. I'm going to pull this up to the very top. I want it snug, but not so snug that it lifts. Okay. Okay, now you can see over here, this follows like an alternating square knot pattern where we drop two and we pick up two. So we now have another square knot that we're going to snug up underneath him. Constantly tugging down on those center filler cords because I want to keep this nice and neat and clean. And whatever tension you use to create one square knot, make the same knot with the same. Picking up the four cords on the other side, doing a square knot over here. So you will have two square knots that fit equally, kind of in the center of your little piece. Okay, now we come back and we find our two center pieces. We're gonna create another square knot here. That's that guy. Okay, you can already see the beginnings of that taking place. So now the trick is to use the rest of these cords that are hanging up to the center. You're always coming back and finding your center. Find my filler cord. So I wanna make sure I'm picking up my cords in the way that I'm supposed to. I'm gonna do my double half hitch again. And I'm gonna have you pardon me for one second because I'm gonna swap to the other side. And now I wanna bring it, I'm bringing, I'm using this guy to bring it in See how my filler cord moved? Which is nice because you can change the direction Anytime very you easily. Want. Yep. That is the whole point of this is being able to change that direction. That's what allows you to make those, those cool leaves and mm -hmm. stuff. It's, you know, it, like you said, it looks really complicated, but once you break it down, it's really easy. Yeah. And see, now I'm taking this <clears throat> side, coming over. The biggest part about making a continuous flow of a shape, how this goes from one side to the next and you just keep coming down, is making sure that when you get to this cross section, I'm gonna show you here in just one second. You have to decide which one, which side, your right or your left side, is going to be the side that cuts across. Like, is my left side gonna come across like this one does? Well, if that's the case, let me finish my last stitch here. All right, so now I've completed the same amount of knots on each side, used every single strand. If this is going to be my side that cuts over and not this, we then have to do, this is our filler cord, okay? We're gonna take that filler cord from the right and use it over the filler cord from the left with a double half hitch and that continues our pattern. And then to continue the pattern, all you do is you keep doing, you bring the next cord down. This maintains my filler cord and we're gonna put all of our double half hitches in with these guys and you're gonna let those cords extend and drop like they do in this right here. 
and then you create the same pattern and you just keep going down as long as you would like. Those are really cool. So these are those motifs that you can make in any project. Yes. And and don't be afraid to play with different patterns. No, there are so, so, so many different patterns out there. Um, I will try to find a couple of the books that have some really great fun patterns and I'll put them up on our Facebook page for the Blue Fiber Tree so people can have a reference tool to some of these cool patterns that you can put. There, There's a lady I saw, she did curtains for her kitchen, just a valance even, and it just had this shape coming down and it started longer and it lifted up and it was really cute. Mm -hmm. It was just neat. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you understand that with the double half hitch and the square knot, you can make almost anything. Mm -hmm. You just have to know those two things. The only thing different was I did a half square knot and then in the bobbly bits down here, it's a simple figure eight knot that's really easy to learn. So none of it is super hard. You just have to learn to break your segments down so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. I hope that everybody has a wonderful time macrame. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer you. Please like, subscribe, share our YouTube channel. We are trying to grow. We want to hit that 300 now. We're getting there. Um, follow us both, Longtail Knits, Alchemy, and the Blue Fiber Tree on Facebook. And please visit our websites, longtailknits.com, alchemy.com. And we hope to see you soon. See you in a couple weeks. Bye, guys.